championnat d'Afrique des Nations de football. Des millions d'entre nous se donnent rendez-vous sur CRTV Sports and Entertainment pour 22 jours de compétition, 32 matchs. Tous les jours, faites un tour express pour ne rien manquer du show. L'aventure, c'est du 16 janvier au 7 février 2021 sur CRTV Sports and Entertainment. Venez, vivez, vibrez. Le Chan démarre le 16 janvier sur la CRTV avec un dispositif exceptionnel. Une dizaine de matchs, deux quarts de finale, les demi-finales. Coming up tonight, Cameroon inaugurates its first ever civil engineering plan to the capacity to assemble 250 vehicles annually. Minister Emmanuel Ngandun Jumisi represented the head of state, President Paul Bia. The International Committee of the Red Cross promises to stand by Cameroon in tackling humanitarian crisis from an influx of CAR refugees due to post-elections violence. And supporters of the Intermediate Lions say their hearts beat as Cameroon prepares to face Burkina Faso tomorrow in a chan encounter. But coach Ntungam Pile says his boys will triumph. The details right now. Thanks for watching the 7.30 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundé. I have personally observed that most of our fellow citizens no longer comply with the protective measures prescribed by the government. The first ever civil engineering equipment band material assembly plant has been inaugurated in Kribi by the Minister of Public Works, Emmanuel Ganun Jumisi, personally representing the head of state president, Paul Bia. The minister at the inaugural ceremony said the plan falls within President Bia's infrastructural development policy. The Kribi assembly plant has a production capacity of 250 heavy assembled in Cameroon vehicles annually for the country and for the Central African market and many more competitive prices. Details with Joyce Kimifu Wajo. A revolution in Cameroon, the cut, then the commemorative stone, inaugurating the first ever civil engineering heavy duty assembly plant at the Kribi Deep Sea Port. With a production capacity of 250 loaders, bulldozers, graders, and compactors, the personal representative of the head of state says it's a development pole that falls within President Paul Bia's infrastructural development policy. I believe with the presence of a plan in Cameroon to fabricate civil engineering, uh, civil engineering equipment made in Cameroon, we can work in order to reduce the cost of our road construction and the cost of our maintenance, road maintenance. The Kribi plant produces assembled Cameroonian machinery at optimized prices for sale in Cameroonian markets and the Semak zone to the joy of local enterprises. The fact that we always have challenges in importing equipment, the time that it takes before reaching here, it takes a very long time. But now you will see that the fact that the machines are present here in Cameroon and even the spare parts, even the, 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 the manpower, the mechanics will be trained here. So I think that is an effort to, to applaud. The mayor of Kribi applauds the initiative that will accompany decentralization with robust machines to the need of councils.
experts of the Economic Union of Central African States are examining their community budget in Yaoundé ahead of the 36th Council of Ministers meeting that kicks off on January 27. The experts are also fine-tuning the sub-region's industrialization plans. Caroline Okeanoma reports that the experts' meeting was opened by the president of Semak Jeber Na Ondo. For three good days, these experts of the Interstate Committee under the chairmanship of Charles Asamba Ongondo will have the arduous task both in person and via video conference to concretize discussions on validating the 2021 community budget which stands at over 81 billion CFA francs higher than last year. We have our meetings in a, a specific environment also due to the rationalization of our e economic uh, institution after the adoption of of, uh, some uh, financing means you know to handle a community project also and we have also you know to to validate some issues concerning the management of uh, our institution in SEMAC in order to strengthen SEMAC. The design of this budget document incorporates certain measures such as the urgency of promoting economic convergence and regional coordination of economic reforms, diversification of the sub-region's economies to make them more resilient to various crises, put in place strategies for the industrialization of the woods in the sub-regions, the improvement of the community integration tax that is still dysfunctional are among the key issues this expert committee are working on and finally to be submitted to the Council of Ministers for adoption next week. The International Committee of the Red Cross remains on the side of the government to tackle humanitarian problems. The Vice President of the Red Cross, Gilles Gabonier, was speaking in Yaoundé following an audience with External Relations Minister Mbela Mbela. Charles Ebune has more. About 215 million people need humanitarian assistance worldwide. A good number of them reside in Cameroon because of conflicts in the Central African Republic as refugees in Cameroon, in the East region in particular. And one of the agencies providing humanitarian assistance is the International Committee of the Red Cross. We do that by providing them with access to safe drinking water, by access to hygiene, by access to, uh, to food. On the heels of the Vice President of the International Committee of the Red Cross, accompanied by its Director for Central Central Africa with residents in Yaoundé comes the resident representative of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Cameroon. We are extremely grateful to the government of Cameroon. There are 430,000 refugees in Cameroon. This is a huge number and uh, Cameroon has always received them with hospitality. Both humanitarian officials discuss with External Relations Minister Belam Bela Cameroon's legendary hospitality towards refugees, especially from Nigeria, the Central African Republic, and other parts of the world. Cameroon's intermediate Lions head coach says his boys will give in their best at tomorrow's crucial cracker against the Stallions of Burkina Faso. Martin Tungompile was speaking during a pre-match press conference in the nation's capital. His counterpart, Seydou Zerbo of Burkina Faso, said they will have to battle hard to qualify. Sirin Waziga reports. Mathematically and going by the Group A standings, the Intermediate Lions of Cameroon need just a draw game to soul through to the quarterfinal stage of the Shan 2020. But a win against the Intermediate Stallions of Burkina Faso is also indispensable. Aware of the stakes, Coach Martin Tungumpile during the pre-match press conference said they were given their utmost and only the best players will be lined up. I think that tomorrow it will be another day. I'm going to put on the field uh, a team uh, which, who, is, which is going to be very, very strong to face the Burkina Bay. Quiz on the absence of Captain Jacques Zoua during the game against Mali, the coach said he had a muscular contraction and is now physically fit. The atmosphere in the Lions den is serene and nothing short of a qualification runs through their minds. My teammate is, uh, is very ready for this game, for to, to try to play for qualification 
and I believe of them. The Stallions, admitting it will be a difficult encounter, hope to qualify. Cameroon and Mali temporarily top Group A with four points each. Burkina Faso sits third with three points, and Zimbabwe tails the group with zero point. The intermediate Lions of Cameroon have just rounded up this their last training session prior to their third and last Group A game against the Stallion of Burkina Faso built for this Sunday at 8 p.m. The training session focused on group cohesion, collective play, and goal-scoring techniques. Cyril Nwazike on standby watched the Lions train at one of the annex sporting grounds of the Olympic Sports Complex. Cyril, good evening. Well, good evening, Moki Edwin Kinzaka, and welcome to the uh, next B Stadium of the uh, uh, Olympic Sports Complex, where the uh, Intermediate Lions of Cameroon are currently having uh, the uh, last training session ahead of uh, tomorrow's cracker against the uh, Stallions of Burkina Faso. Moki, one uh, important aspect here is that they had the surprising visit of uh, uh, former captain of the Intermediate Lions of Cameroon, uh, the uh, uh, African best player Samuel Leto who came uh, dishing out uh, a very vital uh, uh, information. And uh, just to tell you that uh, Samuel Eto'o has been galvanizing the guy. It's a motivating factor having uh, Samuel Eto'o in the midst. Uh, well, Moki, prior to this game, uh, uh, the uh, coach of the Intermediate Lounge, Martin Tungumpile, did say his guys will do all and all to win tomorrow's game against uh, Burkina Faso. Equally, there was this much talk about uh, the uh, captain, uh, Jacques Zoua Daugari. He is present and he is training with the guys. Uh, he has a uh, problem, he had a muscular problem, but he is fine. Uh, uh, technicals, the, uh, the medical doctors here say uh, Jacques Zoua could be uh, fielded in, in tomorrow's game. So all is well here uh, with uh, uh, the uh, indomitable, uh, the intermediate lounge uh, training. Uh, and uh, we hope that uh, tomorrow all, all the guys will be fit for that cracker against uh, Burkina Faso. It will be uh, 8 p.m. Cameroon time when the two teams face. Reporting from from the Annex B of the Olympic Sports Complex with the technical assistance of Elvis Kana, Cyril Nwazeke. Over to you. Thanks, Cyril. Mali takes on Zimbabwe tomorrow in a match day three encounter of the ongoing channel total. The Malians with four points are well ahead of Zimbabwe that have no points. In their pre-match press conference today in Douala, both teams said caution is primordial. Clarice C reports from Douala. The Malians are going in as one of the strongest teams in Group A, but coach Nuhum Diani says no two games are the same. Him, their last two encounters are forgotten, and that against Zimbabwe will be played as though it were their first in the tournament. As far as their play style for the Zimbabwe game is concerned, coach Diani says nothing will change, but intensity will definitely be different. The game against Cameroon was not easy because it was their first and tiredness set in really fast but a lot has changed since then and the proof will be seen on the playing field zimbabwean coach on his part declared lots of difficulties had crippled their team prior to their coming to cameroon half of my players we had 10 training sessions less of half players we have less than five training sessions that means most of us we played we have about average seven training sessions including games and we came under such a big competition like this. As far as the players are concerned, they have recorded many injuries and new ones will be brought in for their next encounter for better performance. For sure we will not give up. For sure we will take the best team in, in the moment what we can make. We're going to try to play against Mali and we will not give up from the first moment to the last moment. Keeper Ariel Zibanda promised supporters they would do their utmost best to bring pride to the Malian fans in Cameroon and abroad. I saw they put their heart in and I saw they were trying and uh, how to say you will see against Mali. Again, we'll be fully fight. Mali will not have easy time. That's for sure. Mali are currently sharing the top spot of Group A with Cameroon as both teams tally four points while Zimbabwe is at the bottom with no points after losing all two of their encounters and conceding four goals. Africa, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are just joining us, you're watching the 7.30 News on CRTV. 
The CPDM Member of Parliament for the Kunki, Honorable Arbe Quinche, has constructed and donated a borehole to the people of Dembeng. It was inaugurated yesterday by the SDO for the Kunki, Jean Daniel Joboina. Chancellor Nanze reports from the West Region. The liquid of life flowing from this borehole, constructed and donated to the population of Demdeng by the CPDM Member of Parliament for the Kunki, Honorable Albert Quinche, he says his gesture is a result of the confidence bestowed on him by the people. I have a mandate, and before they elect me, I promise them to do many things for their benefits. And what I don't hear today is for the benefits of my population. Water is important for everybody. The ball hole comes to solve the problem of water shortage common in the locality in particular and in the Kunki division in general. The population, through the mayor, thanked the donor and promised to take good care of the gift. We have people who are able to take care of it properly because they have been trained for that and make a commitment that we make all our effort to maintain it all the time. The borehole was inaugurated by the SDO for the Kunki, Jean Daniel Joboina, who urged the locals to preserve it jealously. The president of the East Regional Council, Wamane Mbele, has been told to use his wealth of experience and work towards bringing his region out of underdevelopment. East Governor Grigor Vongo officially commissioned the Regional Council Executive Bureau uh, yesterday. We have details of that report with Mokom Robert Acho. History books will retain that Waman Bele is the president of the Paunia East Regional Council, born in 1960 with a sound academic background after the School of Agriculture in Chang and a master's degree still in that field in the renowned University of Ibadan, Alphonse Waman Bene, after handling several posts of responsibility in Irad and other services, with the most recent being that of the government delegate of the Better Urban Council, is today officially installed as the president of the Paunia East Regional Council. The main mission that we have to develop our region using all the resources that we have. To achieve his mission, Waman Mele will work in collaboration with the other members of the team. We are a team, each of us having a certain background, and we need to put all together all those backgrounds. The crowd pulling installation ceremony at the Beta Grandstand witnessed the presence of elites of the East Region, notably Ministers Joseph Lee, Bolwin Wakata, Gabriel Dudu. Okay, as well as senators, parliamentarians, and other dignitaries of the East region. Four people suspected of impersonating top ranking military and police officials, promising to promote their victims or sums of money, have been apprehended by the police. The suspects, in their modus operandi, used phone scams. Cynthia Sattler watched the police presenting the suspects to the media in the nation's capital and compared this report. Within the four apprehended suspects, one was a dismissed army sergeant and another a gendarme on duty at the Dokpong Army Brigade in Douala. The suspects organized a phone scamming operation impersonating top-ranking officials such as the Secretary General of the General Delegation for National Security or the Divisional Commissioner at the Ministry of Defense and Colonels proposing nominations to victims for money. We localized the number at the Douala in the Ndokpasi quarter. We arrested the, the first suspect, Mr. Atangana. We continued our investigation to Yaounde. Mrs. Mimbue were together with uh, Mpolo Rolex, who is uh, a gendarme in duty. We sent him to the said. With the collaboration of their insider, they had access to some information in order to fine-tune a scamming operation that lasted from December 2020 to January 2021, where the first suspect was arrested. According to reports, it was mostly civilians promised merchandise from customs that had fallen prey to this scam. The four suspects will be transferred to Douala at the State Council of Dokoti, where they will be awaiting trial.
35 staff of the National Gendarmerie, the National Guard, and police from Cameroon, Congo, Côte d'Ivoire, and Mali, and some government officials have ended a two-week course of peace operations. The Director General of the International School for Security Forces, Brigadier General André Patrice Bitotte, handed over the attestations in the Mefu and Afamba Division. Details with Victor Siga. Like most countries in Central Africa, Cameroon is faced with a number of multifaceted crises. The seminar, co-organized by the International School for Security Forces, Air Force, and Japan through the United Nations Development Program, provided participants with ways of managing the interests of vulnerable social groups in situations of armed conflict. You should be well aware of the relevance of organizing such an activity being living witnesses of current security stakes in Africa in general. For two weeks, they were provided with appropriate training on civilian protection and tools to better cater for the needs of the vulnerable populations during peacekeeping operations. It has been very much for me in terms of uh, experience. This is expected to help members of peacekeeping missions of both the United Nations and the African Union better manage the problems they are confronted with. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Many players, officials of the different delegations and some members of the local organizing committee of the group B and D in Douala have tested positive for COVID-19. What measures have been taken to take care of the patients? That is what Baldwin Sama is discussing with his guest, Leonard Ewane, at the Bepanda Omi Sports Stadium in Douala. Baldwin Sama, over to you in Douala. Good evening to you, Moki Edwin Kinzika, and welcome to the Bipanda Omni Sports Stadium, where many persons have been tested positive for COVID-19 ever since the competition started here in the nation's economic capital, be it at the Japuma uh, Stadium or here at the Bipanda Omni Sports Stadium. Not only Congolese, we have Togolese. We equally have many Camunians involved in the organization of for this ongoing competition who have been tested positive. We are going to find out from our guest tonight, Leonet Ewane, a field epidemiologist, what's the latest update? as concerns these persons. Good evening to you, Leonard. Good evening, Mr. Sama. Tell us what's the latest update uh, concerning all these persons, Congolese, Togolese, and other communities who have been tested positive for COVID-19. Yes, Mr. Sama. The response against COVID at the level of the region is governed by what we call the incident management system, at the helm of which we find the regional delegate of public health. So the sham equally follows the guidelines that have been set by the country. So we carry out screening against uh, uh, COVID and we screen a lot of people. But I should mention here that few have been tested positive. And the positive cases, be it Cameroonians, be it delegations that have come from other countries, are all currently on treatment. So they're all on treatment. And for how long would they be on treatment? Yeah, you know, treatment. Uh, it's a week treatment, a few days, that will put people on treatment. And as soon as they finish the treatment, some of them go in again for the test. And when they go in for the test, by the time the test comes out negative, it means they have been cured. Thank you so much, Luna, the one for all those updates. Uh, uh, we'll continue monitoring, given that uh, on a regular basis, uh, due to the non-respect of barrier measures against the spread of COVID-19, more and more persons get tested positive for COVID-19 here in the nation's economic capital at the Japoma Stadium and here at the Bipanda Omnisport Stadium. Back to you, Moki Edwin Kinzika. Thanks very much, Baldwin Sama.
And let's come back now with this installation of regional uh, assemblies, councils. The president or the pioneer president of the West Regional Council, Dr. Jules Hilaire Foka Foka, and his bureau members have been told to work in collaboration with the entire population and state officials to succeed. Governor Awa Fonka Augustine was speaking uh, yesterday during an installation ceremony of the Regional Council Executive Bureau, but we are told we shall be coming back to that report. We should be talking about the CPDM Member of Parliament for the Kunki Honorable Abe Kwenchu, who has constructed and donated some equipment. Let's have the report. The commonly used slogan, water is life, ties with the tag on Honorable Dr. Ebanga Joanna Agotoko Abontui, who brings back life to Mamfe following the construction and handing over of the first ever solar powered borehole in Mamfe, a project which comes at the right time. And it was inconceivable for people to live in this era without water. Described by various speakers, Honorable Dr. Agbontri's gesture cannot go without appreciation. This is where we are longing for water. We move kilometers to have water to drink. It's going to help the community a lot. The action of the member of the National Assembly is worth emulating. I call upon all the elites, the living forces of Manu, to do the same. The inaugural of the borehole project marks the beginning of better things that will benefit the population from Manfe Central and Upper Banyang in Manu Division. We're quite sorry for that hitch there. That was a report by Bridget Ndeb Assam on some communities in and around Manfe that will henceforth be spared from health-related issues they suffered from as a result of lack of drinkable water. The first ever solar powered borehole in the area constructed by Honorable Ebanga Johanna Agbotogo Agbontui has been handed over to the communities. Now, we now move on to the Northwest region where fire has damaged beds mattresses and property belonging to students of the Presbyterian Secondary School, Mankan. Last night's fire that extended to some classrooms left many students stranded. Today, the SDO for Mezam, Simon Emil Moore, and the Bamenda City Mayor, Paul Achobong, visited the school and, issues, and issued a request for the emergency humanitarian response to be attended to. Kilo Barin Sala reports on Bamenda. The fire incident at the Presbyterian Secondary School in Mankon, Bamenda, has left personal belongings of students, including uniforms, beds and mattresses consumed by the fire. The magnitude of the destruction has provoked officials of the Bamenda City Council to request for an emergency aid to avoid interruption in classroom work. First to start with, we need mattresses for the children. We need beds for the children. We need pillows, we need blankets, we need bed sheets. In this very crisis moment when we've been able to gather the children in school and this incident has just occurred, it will be good in our interest and in the interest of our children that we make an emergency contribution to bring this situation under control so as to keep the children back on campus. School authorities have distanced themselves from attributing the incident to the prevailing security in the region and have cited electrical lapses as an apparent cause of the incident. No human lives have been lost in the tragedy. The winner of the 18th Suzuki Espresso has received his brand new car from the mobile telephone company MTN in Mukolo in the far north region. Amadou Yaya said his luck came after he subscribed to an MTN bundle of just 250 francs. Henry Tato Ikambi reports from Marwa that MTN still has seven cars to be won. This is the winner of the 13th Suzuki Espresso car of the MTN promo. Yaya Amadou, who is a businessman in the Mayo Chanaga division, where he resides, just subscribed to an MTN bundle one day, and when the results of MTN promo were out, he was declared the winner. I am so happy that I won. One day I subscribed to an MTN bundle for 250 francs. Days after, I received calls from MTN and many friends informing me that I won a car. I was so surprised to be filled with joy. 
Mr. Amadu and MTN officials in the far north are now calling on the populace to subscribe irregularly to MTN bundles of at least 250 francs and carry out mobile money transactions of minimum 5,000 francs to be eligible to win a Suzuki Expresso car and even 20,000 francs every 20 minutes. I advise everyone looking at me to believe in MTN. They are real. I now have my car keys for this brand new car. So if you do like me, you might be the winner tomorrow. TN Promo made provision to give out 20 cars. This is the 13th that MTN is giving out here in Mokolo. Seven others are remaining. So I am counting on all the MTN subscribers and will be subscribers in the far north region to continue subscribing to MTN bundles and do more, more transactions so we can win one car again and even all of the remaining seven. With MTN pledging to keep making their already leading network and services better, they call on the population to keep subscribing to MTN bundles because added to the cars and 20,000 francs every 20 minutes minutes, there is still 20 million CFA friends for one person to win before the promo ends this February 19. The payment of rents by owners of low-cost houses in Cameroon will become effective online from the 1st of March 2021. This is thanks to a partnership agreement that has just been signed in Yaoundé between YUP Cameroon and the Cameroon Real Estate Company SEC. The global objective is to encourage electronic payments and save time. Details with my mom and Joya from CRTV Centre. The payment of rents by owners of low-cost houses in Cameroon has for quite some time been irregular and less efficient. The partnership agreement between the Cameroon Real Estate Company, SIC, and YUP, the electronic payment system of Société Générale Cameroon, is therefore a digital response to growing concerns about a safer and more transparent path for the payment of rents. This agreement is a very strong agreement between uh, the SIC and the Yup Cameroon because uh, for now we give the ability to the citizen to pay their payment through the mobile phone. So now it's easier, uh, this is secure and it's very simple. As from the 1st of March 2021, therefore, owners of low-cost houses will be able to pay their rents in no time and at a reduced cost either through their smartphones using the Yup link or simply getting to the nearest Yup agency. This innovative system, which has been referred to as the dematerialization of payments, is in line with the digital opportunities that are being explored by some enterprises in Cameroon owing to the limits and restrictions imposed by the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. In all conviviality and enthusiasm, the various parties concluded their discussions while hoping that those who own low-cost houses will be duly satisfied. And that ends the 7.30 news on CRTV. Join Atta Badinouma in 30 minutes from now with the news in the French language. I am Moki Edwin Kinzeka in Yaoundé. Thank you for watching. Malgré nos efforts, Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. Info.